little late, but welcome everybody. We are glad you have joined us for the latest episode of Financing Philadelphia's Future, sponsored by the Philadelphia Public Banking Coalition. Um, we have been doing a series of interviews with mayoral candidates, Philadelphia mayoral candidates. And today we are uh, talking to candidate Rebecca Reinhardt. We have about eight questions that we have been consistently asking all of the candidates, and that's what we want to do today. And so we want to go ahead and jump right into it. And let's start with saying hello to Rebecca Reinhardt. Welcome. And I'll give you a couple of minutes, maybe two minutes to give your own bio um, and tell folks about yourself before we get into the questions. Well, good afternoon. It's wonderful to be here. My name is Rebecca Reinhardt, uh, and I'm running for mayor after about 15 years working uh, for the residents of our city. Uh, I spent uh, 10 years uh, working for two different mayors, close to a decade, uh, as the city treasurer, budget director, and chief administrative officer. And uh, then I decided to run for office. I ran for city controller in 2017 uh, and uh, won in a political upset race, uh, took office in 2018. Uh, and as controller, not only did I do the required audits of my office, I also leaned into uh, doing work on some of the city's toughest issues, um, that being gun violence, uh, and other uh, issues, the investigation into the city's response to the civil unrest. Uh, for all of these issues, I put forth thoughtful solutions, uh, but that is where the power of my office ended. As mayor, I can and will make that change happen. So I want to use my knowledge, um, and I should have mentioned uh, before coming back to Philly where uh, I grew up in the area, but coming back in 08, I worked in the private sector. I actually uh, worked on Wall Street uh, and left Wall Street. So I know how banks uh, work and I saw firsthand how they can take advantage of municipalities. So uh, my work uh, for the 15 years for the city has been to make it work better. And that's why I'm running for mayor uh, to make our city uh, work better for people. Uh, and I'm glad uh, to be here today and join this conversation. Thank you. And again, you're here with the Philadelphia Public Banking Coalition's Financing Philadelphia's Future. I'm Vanessa Lowe, your host. I have uh, host Vanessa's Money Hour on G-Town Radio, and I'm also a member of the Banking Coalition. All right, let's jump into the first question, which is uh, critically important for us, the Philadelphia Banking Coalition. Will you appoint the candidates recommended by the City Council to the initial board of directors for the Philadelphia Public Financing Agency? Well, I think in terms of uh, the appointments, uh, assuming that uh, if I'm victor, if I win in May 16th, then I would uh, right away uh, come in and and uh, talk to those involved and to understand uh, the people that the city council proposed. I mean, there's a new city council coming in as well, so there's a lot of moving pieces uh, occurring. But will I, what I will commit to is uh, discussing in good faith how we move forward uh, with the concept here. Okay. We may come back to that, but let, let me okay. move on to a couple of the other questions. Sure. Because uh, we definitely want to get them all in. What are your plans to, and it's a related question, what are your plans to drive investment, public and private, into underserved sectors of the economy including black and brown neighborhoods, small businesses, cooperatives, and affordable housing. Yes, so, and how long, do I have a few minutes on this one? Is that- We have eight questions and now about 25 minutes. So, okay, yeah, okay, well, this been, so uh, I have a, a plan, a part of my economic policy plan on my website, uh, rebeccaforphiladelphia.com details out uh, my plan to grow black businesses in our city. Wow. Uh, with a specific focus on neighborhoods that have been long neglected. Uh, so uh, as city controller, I did a lot of work around um, the historical root causes of 
uh, the gun violence in some certain parts of our neighborhoods, which goes back to poverty, which goes back to redlining and decades and decades of racist government policy. And it's my view that we have to be intentional with growing wealth and making investments as a city government. So in terms of a black owned business, right now, uh, the Philadelphia metro area, only 3% of Philadelphia metro area businesses are black owned, which is completely unacceptable. Uh, and uh, I have set a goal that by the end of my first administration, uh, that uh, we would at least double that uh, and to be on track with other major cities such as Atlanta, Baltimore, uh, Charlotte and others. Um, and the way that I would do that uh, would be two main things. First, I would partner with entities, I meaning the city of Philadelphia, we uh, would partner with entities such as the Enterprise Fund, which are doing uh, work uh, around scaling up uh, black owned business. And what I think is important here is the equity piece. So the biggest reason that um, that black owned business has not grown more uh, than it has is because of the lack of intergenerational wealth. Uh, and that the cause of the lack of intergenerational intergener wealth is because of the racist government policies. So we need to fix that equity issue. And I, I uh, propose that we put city money um, into uh, help black owned businesses grow so that we create an equity piece that's not a loan. I don't think uh, that small businesses uh, uh, and uh, African-American businesses need loans as much as they just need grant money. They just, they need, the grant sounds like it's tied to something, but like they need equity. Um, and uh, that is one piece of my plan. Uh, and then the other piece of my plan is to have a much stronger Office of Economic Opportunity that reports directly to me. Uh, and my administration's goal will be uh, that 40% of city contract dollars go to minority businesses, not women, um, not women owned business, minority businesses, uh, because the city of Philadelphia spends over a billion dollars uh, procuring goods and services and it's it could be a huge economic engine uh, if we uh, gave a significant amount of that business to small business, particularly to black owned business uh, in the city. Okay, so the number two question is, how do you, but I'm gonna start with sort of like, do you envision, and if so, how do you envision a public bank advancing that kind of work? Yeah, so this is something that I would be very interested in exploring. I am very interested in the idea of the public bank. Uh, many of you have probably heard me express some concerns about um, uh, set actually operationalizing it. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, that often en entities that are controlled by government um, in the city of Philadelphia, there ends up being, you know, patronage and politics involved uh, in the actual entity. And that's what I think we need to avoid here. Uh, so, but I think that the goals of the public bank and the, the way that it is envisioned to make loans and uh, at lower interest rates and get to our underserved communities um, is something that that could be very, very valuable. Uh, so I I think it's something that that I would want to explore more of how how would we do it in a way that doesn't lead to the similar outcomes to a lot of other entities that have been set up by the city government. Okay. Let's move on. So this next set of questions is about really improving the financial infrastructure. So what are your plans for updating the financial infrastructures in Philadelphia? For example, updating technology and systems to bring greater transparency and efficiency to the office of the treasurer. Uh, so 
Definitely the city of Philadelphia is behind on technology. I was the treasurer for a number of years. Um, and uh, the technology is needs to be upgraded. I think a very important piece of that is transparency though. And transparency is something as city controller, I was always pushing the county administration on to have more of, because I'm a firm believer that the city of Philadelphia should be sharing information with the public. Uh, so New York City has something called Open Checkbook, which uh, shows every single payment that goes out the door by the city of New York. And you can utilize it and look at it and uh, it's, it's, it's a great resource. I, uh, will create that as mayor, uh, as city controller, I put out every expense that we paid. I released it quarterly with everything, everything that we, we paid any $50 to something. I put it on our website. So you saw every tax dollar and that's what I would do citywide, uh, the, because I think people deserve to see how, their dollars are are being spent. Um, I, I believe strongly in that. And the goals that um, the goals that 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 we're discussing, the goals to get equity and to get loans into neighborhoods that have not seen the money um, is something that I'm I'm completely aligned with. And um I want to use my administration, if elected mayor, to make those goals a reality and utilize uh, a public bank if that fits into this strategy uh, in the best in the best way possible to do that. Okay, sticking with the same subject, will you increase the city's list of authorized depositors to prioritize local banks and credit unions that are actively serving the local community? So I think that would be great to, to expand the list of authorized depositories. When I was city treasurer, we always had a very open process. Um, there are certain requirements that have to be met by the bank uh, in order for them to be considered an authorized depository. But if any bank approached me as city treasurer and wanted to be an authorized depository, I would take that to city council um, to go through that process. So I think it is incredibly important. And I think we also need to be keeping track of which banks are doing a good job lending to Philadelphians and which aren't. The banks, for, for example, performed very, very differently um, related to uh, the uh, pandemic money, um, the PPP, the PP, yeah, PPP money. Uh, the the different banks um, uh, had very different outcomes. And I think as a city government that we need to be looking at that and we need to be holding them accountable um, to say, look, like we need you uh, to, to, to do right by Philadelphians here. Okay. What are your plans for promoting access to residents to economic development entities, including banks, CDFIs, and private developers. Um, sorry, I'm seeing some of the comments in the chat as well. Yeah, um, try to ignore that. Oh, we'll ignore get to it? them. Okay. It's so uh, hard when you're the speaker, right? Yeah, so, yeah, I know. And I thought, oh, Nicole, that's a good question. And I'm like thinking, okay, sorry about that. We'll get to them. Okay, okay. Um, no, I, I'm. I want to strengthen the relationship between CDFIs. Um, and banks and try to uh, get more communication uh, to residents about programs, uh, about possibilities for loans, possibility for, for grant money. Often there's a disconnect between a, a bank might have a program, uh, but then people don't know about it. And so then they're not applying. And we need to do much more outreach in our neighborhood commercial quarters uh, to really um, communicate with the neighborhood businesses to see how they're doing, uh, to say, okay, you know, uh, here are some banks that provide these services. Uh, I think as a city government, we need to be much, uh, we need to meet businesses in the commercial quarters uh, and offer them 
support to get to the the grants and programs that they need because there's no way it's very very difficult as a small business to navigate Philadelphia's government uh, and that's something that I've seen firsthand from my different roles and as city controller I we would often take calls from small businesses that were having trouble, you know, they were getting bounced between the revenue department and l &I and l &I back to finance. And then it was, and it shouldn't have to be like that. And as, as mayor, I will work to break down those silos to make it easier for small business. And I also plan to have a senior official in the mayor's office specifically uh, devoted to small business communication uh, and I also, a part of my economic growth policy is to have regional coordinators in the Commerce Department responsible for each neighborhood in the city uh, so that businesses are taken care of in multiple uh, different parts of my administration. Okay. All right. And this is the last question because we started with uh, the sort of most important one, but it's related. Going back now to the Philadelphia Public Finance Authority, how will you implement and fund the Philadelphia Public Financing Authority and ensure its independence, transparency, and community focus, which it sounds like you've expressed that's, that's, that was one of your concerns. So as mayor, you'd have a little more yeah. control over that, right? Yes, yes, I absolutely would. Uh, and I think as mayor, what I would be um, really interested in is how, and some of the answers could be out there already, you could know them, and then that's just about um, us having more conversation. Uh, but how does the public bank interrelate with PIDC, for example? How does the public bank interrelate um, uh how does it get its seed money? And then uh, what are the parameters around the loans? All of those questions, I think, uh, are really good ones. And I'm committed to this work. One thing that uh, I wanted to share is that, you know, I have a lot of ideas coming from my background in finance about what could be, what we could do. So, um, for example, you know, the pension fund, and I was on the board of the pension fund, the pension fund has billions and billions of dollars of investment, but it doesn't invest in Philly, right? So, um, and I am a member of a group called Accelerator for America, which is a group of mayors and electeds from around the country. And I brought up the topic to them about what if we pooled resources, like as cities, pooled pension resources, and then th then we can invest in each other's neighborhoods. Because the question is always around concentration. There's all these financial parameters around it. Uh, I only bring that up because the, a public bank could be very helpful in something like that. Um, working in relation with the pension fund, maybe we could even work with other cities uh, because other cities have that same challenge that they have a pension fund that's investing in things that could even be um, negative, could even be disruptive to cities um, and, and to underserved communities like private equity can be. Um, so I say all that, um, and maybe that was too much, uh, too many ideas uh, on this forum, but uh, I, I, I do have a lot of thoughts and I know private banking um, and I know that they do, uh, banks do, often try to take advantage of governments. I've seen that working for Bear Stearns, working on Wall Street, um, that they often knew more than governments about what they were doing and utilize that to their benefit. And I have used that knowledge to always push back on the banks as city treasurer and other jobs. But uh, right. I really appreciate uh, this conversation and support the, your efforts uh, to try to make this a reality. All right, let's get a couple of more questions in here now that aren't on our standard list. Nicole, let's turn to you. What, do, what question do you have? I'll start with, uh, hi everyone, hi Rebecca. I'll start with what feels like a pretty simple one because I think you were touching on it and it's specific to treasury. In most, in many other cities, treasurers decide where the city's funds, which banks hold the city's funds. We have 13 authorized depositories in Philadelphia. In a lot of other cities, they'll tie the disbursement of those funds, the holding of those funds to Community Reinvestment Act requirements, 
fair lending performance and things like that. Um, I've, we've taken a look at the fair lending report that the treasurer's office currently produces. It leaves a little bit to be desired. Okay. Um, I think the question there is, are these things that you would prioritize as part of your administration, uh, really being thoughtful about treasury and um, tying um, those relationships to community reinvestment and fair lending uh, expectations and banking laws? Yeah, so just one clarify, one clarity question. Um, what you're saying is not if they're an, so city council approves the fact that they're an authorized depository, but what you're saying is once they're on that list, yeah. actually giving them money right. is dependent on these things. Yes, I love that. Yes, I like that idea a lot. I like that idea a lot. That has not been the historical practice in Philly. It's just been, you know, like there's an RFP and then, or it's just historical practice. Right. And it's unfortunate because these laws have been on the books since the seventies. Right. Um, and I think this is just an example of like, why aren't we as a city better making use of these laws that, that have been on the table? Um, yeah. Yeah. No. And I think that also would say to the banks, this is where our priorities are and don't expect to get our money if you're not actually helping our neighborhoods exactly okay. okay um peter i'm going to come to you for a question but actually because this is sort of on the same theme of legislation was passed i think quite a while ago 10 years ago actually that i required that um the institutions that the city partners with are supposed to go through a slavery disclosure process are you familiar with that and yes my understanding is it's never been implemented you want to say a few words about that I thought that Wells, uh, I might be, I, I thought that there was. Um... There were a couple of responses. I And I went to an in COBRA, the National Coalition of uh, Blacks for Reparations of America. They had, a I think, one response from Wells that essentially said, kind of like, a, uh, here's what we found, but not, not very deep. And I don't think much has happened since. So, so I, re I remember there was one hearing with them. Um, in city council that, but that was, I mean, I was treasurer in 2008 to 2010. So that was a long time ago now. Uh, but um, I think, um, look, I, the, anything that can be done uh, on the conversation of uh, slavery, the conversation around potential reparations, I think is meaningful to have. Uh, and if there's something that's not being done that's supposed to legally be done, then I would legally do it or push the banks to do it. Uh, I hadn't realized uh, there was something that wasn't being done right now. Yeah, that's worth looking into. Okay, now Let's go to Peter with a question. Uh, <clears throat> Rebecca, um, along those same lines of, of the mayor's job is really to enforce the laws that are passed by city council. And one of those laws, the ordinance that was passed uh, last year, was for the establishment of the Philadelphia Public Financial Authority. So if, if did I hear you correctly, that you will be in, uh, implementing that law, but the way in which you're going to do it will uh, depend upon conversations with current members of council and the people who have been previously recommended. Uh, is this, you envision a do-over of the recommendation process or? I I don't I don't want to say that because I'm sure that there's been a lot of work put into the process already. Um, all all I'm saying is I don't want to speak prematurely without having conversations with all of you without fully understanding everything where it stands. Um, where the process is I, I don't want to create havoc in any type of process, it has been passed by City Council. Um, I do just want to make sure that we could have a robust conversation uh, in the process of implementation. Great attention was paid to the issue that you've brought up about um, the need to make sure that there's independence uh, okay. for an agency that uh, we're, we're very intent on having a stakeholder uh, okay. control and operation, which we don't feel exists with PIDC and other institutions around the city. Um, and um, but we're very, very conscious of every way we can think of to prevent corruption, okay. political influence. Is there something that we missed that you think needs to be added um, in addition to the requirements for 
of being independent as a CDFI must and and the other um, uh, putting the uh, the officers and directors under the, uh, the the rules of the city's ethics code. All the things that we could think of to assure okay. have been put in. Did we miss something that you think we should uh, add to? No, it's. I'm not saying you missed anything. Nicole, I'm going to come to you with a question. Yeah, so and just that. yeah, and it's just on exactly the conversation that Peter and Rebecca are having right now. Um, and I think I know Rebecca at the outset you mentioned how one of your focuses has been transparency, right? And I think that's one of the driving themes that we're interested in as the Public Banking Coalition is taking. Um, economic development decisions and a lot of the financing decisions that happen within the city out of these private rooms and into the light of day where people, um, local residents, local stakeholders, as Peter said, are at the table, not only at the table, but drive. I think it's, it's just that sort of understanding that our focus is bringing bringing local residents and advocates up into those seats of power. And I just really want to know what her thoughts are broadly on those kinds of things, either using the PPFA to do that. Um, uh, she had mentioned some uh, changes at Treasury. In, in all of those aspects, uh, what are her plans or visions for democratizing the economy? Okay, my apologies. I lost my Wi-Fi. I apologize. Okay, we're glad you're back. Nicole has a question. Let's just get it out there quickly, Nicole, and see if we can get an answer before we yeah, have I think to go just up. broadly a theme we're interested in is democratizing the economy, bringing okay. advocates, local stakeholders into those seats of power, of power and making processes writ large transparent. Um, just briefly, any any thoughts um, from your perspective or sort of how you would view that within your administration? I would be very supportive of that. I uh, am a big proponent of bringing uh, community voices, of bringing uh, expert voices in, around the table and making things very transparent. In every process I've done, I try to involve people, stakeholders that care. So when I did, for example, the audit of the police department in the controller's office, I brought me to community council um, which had uh, people from uh, retired police officers to people that were um, uh, very left-leaning with political views, people from every neighborhood, uh, because I feel very strongly that open a government that is open and transparent is going to be the best run government. Um, that is just philosophically what I believe in. And uh, so I absolutely would want uh, to bring you in to uh, how we are doing banking and how we are doing just um, bringing community in overall. And when I say community, I mean stakeholders such as yourselves. Okay, all right, we're out of time, but I wanna give you one last minute, uh, Rebecca, to maybe sort of close out and give a final word uh, to the audience um, and the Philadelphia Public Banking Coalition. Great. Uh, well, I just want to say thank you so much for having me here today. I think that uh, my goals uh, to make our city government truly work for the people of our city are aligned with what um, you, uh, the public banking coalition is trying to do. And I think that I can use my knowledge and experience of the private sector uh, to uh, help enact um systems and structures that uh, help our most disadvantaged communities. It's something that I care deeply about. Uh, it's why I left uh, finance uh, 15 years ago to come to the city. And uh, it's why I'm running for mayor today. I wanna make this city work. I wanna make it safer, cleaner. I want economic opportunity for everyone. Uh, and I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And thank everyone for joining us for this. Uh, and we will continue to keep you updated and send out press releases as we get other mayoral candidates uh, who have agreed to come and join us for this conversation. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.